concerned, and it hasn't played a role since then, except in certain attempts to appropriate quantum mechanics to, to other kinds of agendas, new age agendas or deconstructionist agendas uh, or post-structuralist agendas or so on and so forth. Now, um, could you talk a little bit, a lot of people have the, the notion that science is a very definite thing, and mm -hmm. there is one thing, and all scientists agree on that, and that science moves forward by very orderly things of science doing experiments, and it seems like the history of science tells us something very different. Of course you're right about that. Um, of course you're right about that, and this is something that has come much more to the center of people's attention over the past 30 years or so with the writings of people like Kuhn and, and so on and so forth. Science is a very messy, very uh, back and forth, uh, very complicated, very social, very human institution, like other institutions are. Um, 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 of course, there isn't universal agreement among scientists, particularly about the foundations of quantum mechanics. Of course, there are messes all over the place. But if you just say that and leave it there, I think you're not doing the situation justice. I think, and, and um, this is again repeating something that I said this morning, there is still a really important distinction between two quite different ways that you can come at the world. Um, both of them are imperfect, both of them are messy, both of them are back and forth. But there is a posture of coming at the world with the demand that you're going to find something that makes you feel good, you're going to find something therapeutic, you're going to find that what lies at the center of the universe, what lies at the foundation of all being, is some attractive, powerful, safe, accessible, reassuring image of yourself. This is the way the Vatican came at the world in its dispute with Galileo. This is the way the Victorians came at the world in their dispute with Darwin. The problem that the Vatican had with Galileo is that humanity was being displaced from the center of the universe. The problem that Darwin had, that, that the Victorians had with Darwin is that, is that the ancestry of man wasn't as dignified and wasn't as reassuring as people wanted it to be. Um, it seems to me that one of the important historical distinctions that science is entitled to is that it's science that always represents the resistance to this impulse. It's science that always represents the demand that you come at the world with open and authentic wonder and with sharp, cold, clear eyes and, and in a way that's singularly intent on getting at the truth, whether the truth ends up being reassuring and therapeutic or, and therapeutic or not. The statements in the film of the form consciousness is the ground of all being, or our consciousness links up with the, with the consciousness of the unified field, so on and so forth, I must say, and this is what was primarily disturbing to me, I hear in all this vivid echoes of the Vatican's position that the Earth is at the center of the universe, or of the anti-Darwinian position that man was created by God, that we're somehow specially important, that we somehow have a special role to play, or a special link, a special connection with what's at the foundation of the world. We don't know that. And our job in searching through the world is to find out if that's true or not, not to come to the world with a demand that it be true, or not to select which scientific theory to believe based on whether that scientific theory seems to endorse that kind of claim. What about um, then the role of um, intuition? Let's say because a lot of you know mystical right. uh, writings or you know sages, whatnot, enlightened beings, right. they they report certain things that, right. they've, that they've experienced. Right. So that's more of the, on the, let's say, the intuitional side, where it may not be that they are, they have, they're predisposed to think a human's the center of the universe. They that's just, fair enough. Yeah, they just, that, you know. that, That's fair enough. Look, I think 
Um, 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 there are other ways of distinguishing between ways of coming at the world. There are great intellectual traditions, intellectual traditions of which I'm enormously respectful, of mystical access toward the world, of revelatory access toward the world, all sorts of stuff. Then there is a scientific tradition. And the scientific tradition is to approach the world very roughly speaking. People talk about scientific method as if that's some distinct way of reasoning. It doesn't seem to me to be a distinct way of reasoning. What you mean by scientific method is some attempt to come at the world globally in the way you come at the project of getting a fire started. Or, or building a house, or weaving your clothing, or something like that. There is this style of reasoning that we refer to as common sense, okay? And the scientific project is essentially the project of seeing if we can expand the style of common sense as a complete approach to the world, as a complete approach to existence. I think this is an interesting and compelling project for two reasons. One, because common sense is a compelling way of reasoning. Two, because the project of applying common sense to the world as a whole has turned out to be spectacularly successful. On the other hand, um, it seems to me that you could perfectly well make an argument, look, common sense and not, say, mystical revelation is indeed the right way to fix your toaster. It's not the right way to decide what you think about God or what you think about the point of existence or something like that. For that, you need entirely distinct methods. Both of these are very interesting claims to make, very respectable claims to make. All that I think is bad is to mix them up with one another. Do you think that, that in, in the future, in time, I mean, both are purportedly looking into the nature of the universe, right. the, big, the big you, right. everything. Right. Do you think that there's a, a way in which at some point these will converge? Um, I don't see any reason to believe that. I, I think um, so far all of the announcements of this convergence, which are surely all over the place, um, have proven hollow once, once, you, once you look at them. Um, so no, I, I don't see any, indeed, I guess I see the opposite, and I guess I see and, you know, this is another way of putting the point that I was trying to make this morning. For my money, the image of the world and of our place in the world that emerges through science is getting more and more uncomfortable for us as time goes by, is getting farther and farther from the image of us that emerges in the great religious traditions, the great mystical traditions, so on and so forth. We're being presented with a mechanical picture of ourselves by science that we don't know how to take in. And I think the interesting challenge of science to our imaginations is not that it's reproducing other bodies of knowledge that, that we have other kinds of access to, but that it's giving us something altogether different from all of those other traditions, something with an enormous amount of force behind it because of, be, because of the success and the, and the earned authority of the scientific technique. 